good day Munir Ajam from SUCAD with another video from our Applied Project Management channel. Today's video could be a long video and it's a tough topic to talk about. It's about the roles and responsibilities of project manager. However, like many other questions in project management, whenever we talk about something, what is a project? What is a project manager? What's the role of the project manager? What is a program? Usually, the best answer must always start with it depends. Why it depends? Because the huge spectrum range of roles or project definitions or scope definition, again, anything in project management could have many, many variety. This is why it's always, we always recommend that whenever you are working on procedures or guideline or in discussion in project management, always start with a glossary of terms. What does the word project mean to you? What does the word project manager mean to you? What does the word phase or stage mean to you in the context of your organization? Now, why is the role of the project manager vary greatly? Well, that's what this video is about and maybe more than one video. Let's start discussing some of this. Now, we say it depends. It depends on what? Well, again, I'm working from home, small board, so forgive me. One thing, it depends on whether the project is internal or external. What do we mean by this? We mean is that is the project being done with internal staff, with no service provider, with no contractors, with no consultants? Obviously, you could have some spot on here and there, maybe a special consultant working with you. But in general, the work is done internally in any type of organization, whether you are an NGO or government or uh, for-profit organization. So is it internal or external? That's one question. Another question, and then I will highlight some more points later. Another question might be if it is external. Oh, let me, let me stay with internal first. If it's an internal project, then there are many factors affect the role of the project manager. Now, somebody might jump in here and say, Munir, you know what? I mean, the role of the project manager is to manage project, right? Yes, of course. Project manager, manage project. Uh, however, the role of responsibility could vary greatly, uh, as we have mentioned. So let's explain why it varies greatly. Again, if it's internal, what the industry? Are we talking about marketing project, event management, weddings? or building nuclear power plant, or uh, building uh, factories, uh, or metro system. So if the industry, is it capital project, or is it technology driven? Is it uh, event or hospitality? So the industry make a difference. The function within the organization, or maybe we can say the type. Is a project within an organization? Is it an IT project? Is it a business project? Is it a marketing project? It is, a, is it a, a AI project? Um, so type of project might have a difference. Size and complexity, which we call it project class. Is it a small project? Is it a large project? Is it a mega project? Uh, is it uh, simple? Is it complex? Now, obviously I'm not giving you answers here what's the role of the project manager, uh, but we need to just to set our mind to understand that the variety of here. Now, how can this, these things affect the role of the project manager? Well, isn't the role of the project manager, as we said a minute ago, to manage project? Well, maybe, maybe not. 
In so many situations we've seen on very small projects, the project manager could be a person who is a technical person, uh, a programmer, a copywriter, an engineer, working on, on technical things and being asked to manage a small project that uh, probably with a few resources. In this case, the person is not really trained as a project manager, does not have experience as a project manager, which is what we typically call the accidental project manager. And in that case, that person maybe is not functioning as a project manager. They could, that person could have the title. Yeah, forgive, you know, let me be clear here. Many organizations could give that person the title of a project manager, but that's really, you know, in real world practice, it's an accidental project manager, someone who's been asked to manage a project without prior experience or knowledge or education in project management. In other words, that person would probably function more like a technical person doing technical work uh, and maybe leading a few other people or coordinating. Uh, that person might not have the power to contract, the power, may not have the power uh, to um, set budgets or request budget uh, or many other things. So that could be more of like a team member given the title of a project manager and we have to highlight that. On bigger project, maybe you have a dedicated project manager, then the role of the project in this case is manage the project. Now, when we look at many guides that are out there and the certification, sometimes they make the role of the project manager like the jack of all trade. That's the person who does everything. That's the person who estimates, who schedules, who does the risk assessment. Well, maybe if they have a small project and you have accidental project manager, that might be the case. The project manager is doing everything, they're doing all the project management tasks, plus maybe many of the technical tasks. However, as the project gets bigger, it would be not practical, let's put it that way, we're not gonna use the word impossible, for that person to do everything. So in this case, a role of the project manager might have a project team, or actually let me correct myself, a project management team. These are the people who would be helping the project manager manage. So instead of having one person as a project manager, now we have a team headed by the project manager and supported by planner or scheduler or cost estimator or cost control or maybe risk specialist. Uh, I've had done other videos on the different roles of responsibility and the stakeholders uh, on a project. You can search on the web on, on our uh, YouTube channel and you will find those videos. So I'm not gonna go into detail about that. But in this case, the role of the project manager is to manage the project management team and with them manage the rest of the team, the technical guy doing the work. And what does that mean, manage? In this case, of course, mean uh, plan, coordinate, uh, direct, mentor, coach, uh, hold people accountable, uh, guide uh, the team, um, again, uh, report to management, uh, collect information, analyze information, per performance information, uh, be uh, proactive, take corrective action, take preventive action. There are many things that the project manager would do as, in order to manage the project. However, as we said, in a small project, the project manager might be doing everything. On large project, the project manager might have a team that could be one or two or five or 50 people helping her or him manage the project. So in this case, the project manager really is a manager, a senior manager managing the project through people. And those people, the project management team, are helping manage the rest of the project activities. So that's the situation where we have internal project. Recently, we've been asked about the role of the project manager between client and contractors and all of that stuff. In that case, um, we have to address the situation where we have contracts and in those situations, then the role of the project manager, in addition to everything I said earlier, would also be impacted by, are you? a project owner or the organization is a project owner or a service provider.
That's the first thing that will affect the role of project manager. Now, the type of contract, which I will touch on a bit later, will also have significant effect. So obviously, the first thing we need to talk about here, are you or is your organization, not you as a person, is your organization the project owner? That means doing project as a developer, and you will be operating. Now, when we say project owner, that means you are the one who is paying for the project. You are the one who initiated the project. You have the vision for the project. And of course, when you finish, you are the organization that will be operating and maintaining whatever the project produced, whether it's the computer facilities or physical uh, industrial plants. And then we have the service provider. And uh, service provider, that mean contractors, consultant, anybody who is working on project for an external client. So, what is the role of the project manager here? Well, let me just start with the left side. In my view, again, I'm not gonna go back to what I said earlier. One of the biggest things that make a difference here is that the type of the project and the size of the project and complexity as we discussed earlier. In addition to those factors, you could have typically here two or three type of PM. We need to understand the role of the PM. The role of the PM, as we said, is not generic. It's not just, yeah, manage project, great. Other than that, we probably there are 100 different versions of PM out there. In some organization, especially those who work on capital project, you might have PM that handle the early phases of the project. So that is more on the business side or the strategic planning side or the facilities planning side, depend again what industry. These are the project manager, may not have the title by the way. They could have the project manager title or maybe in some organization they are maybe uh, uh, called the business analyst or they're called the facilities analyst or strategic uh, or business uh, uh, strategic uh, planner or facility planner, they might be different things or they might be given in some organization who have higher level of maturity and understand project manage management well, they could be called project manager um, or whatever you want to call them. So let's not get hang up on the names because sometimes many people are really doing complex management of projects and they don't have the title of project manager and sometimes you have people who are really doing clerical work and they are called project manager. So be careful with the title. This is why this video. So in a project owner situation, you might have the, you know, a person responsible for managing the activities or the stage or phase of the project that at the early part. In camp methodology, if you have watched some of our videos on camp, you, this is basically what we call the discovery phase, uh, which is usually ISO and PMBA excluded from the project. In our view, no, it is part of the project and it has to be managed like any phase of the project. Uh, so this period here, uh, obviously in this case, uh, the project manager will be closely, working closely with the sponsor or some organization call it the project owner or the project executive. So in this case, these project manager role responsibility, again, depend on size and complexity, will be responsible to manage the discovery phase of the project, which means defining the concept, finalizing the, the objective of what needs to be done, uh, or what is the product we are going to produce, the market analysis, the feasibility study, uh, the benefit uh, are that are expected. These are, will be the responsibilities of this person. And then we might have a PM, now we're talking facilities, that is responsible for what we call EPC, or some people call design build, which means the engineering procurement construction of facilities. So in that case, you will have the project manager managing those facilities. Now, here it's clear probably, there are not too many debate on this role. This role here uh, could vary greatly, which as a function of this and the type of contract. So I will come back to that later. But in general, we might have a person here, given the title of a PM, that is responsible for the project owner on taking that project 
So basically we have a handover from here to here. So we'll take over that project uh, leadership and we'll take it all the way to what we would call mechanical completion or the, the pre-commissioning uh, or uh, completing the construction of the facility in this case. Maybe in some cases they could include some commissioning, but usually that is here. Now what else could we have here? Now, if, again, if you're familiar with CAMP, uh, great. If you're not, go back and take a look at some of our CAMP videos. We might have something called operational readiness. And the operational readiness is all the work that And I use the word PM here, although typically we don't have the word PM in there. Usually we could be a head of operation or operation rep or operation manager. There could be many titles, but in this case, I want to use the term project manager that is responsible for operation readiness. And operation readiness, as I was explaining, it's all the activities that have to be done in parallel to the facilities being constructed or engineered to prepare the team of the project owner to take over the project, so another transition here at the end, in order to operate and maintain the facilities for its useful life, which could be 20 years or 25 or 30 years, whatever the case might be. Now, of course, we will not have one project manager for 30 years, and even this project manager could maybe ultimately hand this over to the operation manager. Yeah. Um, but that's operation, let's leave it out of this discussion. So what we are saying here, in the project you might have on large capital project, you could have three different project manager involved on a project. Um, uh, and you might even have, in this case, you might have an engineering manager and a construction manager. Technically, those could be called also project manager for engineering, project manager for construction, if you want to use that title. And each one of them would be responsible for an area of the project. Now, if we come here, before we talk about the project manager role uh, on the service provider side, maybe we need to discuss the type of service provider. We might have what we call PMC, Project Management Consultant. These are companies who would probably work with the project owner and help them manage the project on their behalf. In that situation, usually project owner may not have enough project management experience or capacity or staff. They hire a PMC who will act like their project management team. We might have engineering, sorry, I need to change my markers. We might have engineering in the US, they call them contractors. In many places, they call them consultant. And then we won't have the construction. And there could be other people as well. Obviously, there could be many service providers here and contractor and subcontractors. But in general, you would have what we would call a project management consultant, uh, engineering consultant, and construction consultant. Sometimes all three, sometimes each two, sometimes only one. A general contractor, like in the US, it could be common to have a general contractor that does the whole thing. Now, this is not a video about contracting, so I'm not gonna go spend and talk a lot of time about different type of contracts and the different type of execution of contracts. I just wanna talk about the role of the project manager in the different scenarios. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> so let's say, and this is some of the questions that were posted to us recently. Uh, you have, a client, project owner, that want to build a facility. Let's say it could be a tower. And they do not have the enough people and capacity to manage that project. So what do they do? Sure, this organization could still have this, could still have this, and could still have this, all three roles. But now, these three roles are totally different than before. Which way? What do we mean by this? If you have a project management consultant, a company specialized in managing projects that you hire to help you manage a project, then typically these people will be providing 
the project managers directly that will be managing the project directly. You will have a planner, scheduler, estimator, accountant, everything else. And in this case, the project management team would shrink probably to two, two people, two or three or four people maximum. I know right now one of my clients have a mega project going on. Their project management team here is three people uh, because they have contractor or PMC doing the, managing the work for them. In that case, these people on the project owner side, they are still called project manager. But in reality, in reality, I prefer to call them a client trap because they are not technically managing the day-to-day -day event of the project. The day-to-day -day is being managed here. Not even there, it's probably managed by these guys. But these, these guys are doing oversight, yeah? So notice now we're starting to see that there are probably be four layers of management, if not more. But in general, let's say somebody on this side is managing the day-to-day -to -day work. So what are these guys doing? Well, these guys are basically becoming the liaison, the point of contact between these guys and management of the project owner. Maybe the end users uh, or the executive sponsor or project executive or steering committee or something like this. So they are collecting reports. They don't probably generate uh, cost analysis or schedule analysis. They get everything they want. They will ask for these guys to submit. These guys will submit to these guys. These guys will forward to management. This is in, in terms of things related to management. They could be technical things. If these guys have technical question, they will come to these guys. These guys will go to whoever the technical people who can answer them. So in reality, these people here are becoming a liaison. But I know it's not politically correct to call them liaison, and not politically correct to call them client trap. So we still give them the project manager title. Again, let's not get hang up on this. In this case, of course, the role of the project manager has become more of high level coordination. High level, because it's probably senior or executive level. And I use the word coordination because they are coordinating between these and these. <coughs> now, what's happening on this side? And why did I say there could be many layers? Well, obviously, if we are doing construction, the construction management company, the contractor, are the ones who are managing the day-to-day -day level on the project site down to the foreman level. So you have the foreman, maybe the senior foreman, the superintendent, uh, senior superintendent, uh, maybe area manager, a construction manager, depend how big the project size. So even on the contractor side, you know, if we go down to the laborers, the one who is doing work, there could be five layers above that person. Um, okay, so basically, in this case, the construction company, the contractor, usually, especially if they're working on a fixed price contract, they are the one who would be doing most of the management of the day to day. Same thing with the engineering, that company, if you have. Sometimes I know construction company are doing engineering design. Some cases are separate. If you are separate, then the engineering consultant or contractor would be doing the same thing. They will be doing the engineering design and you'll have the engineer and designer doing the work. Then they have a, a supervision and a higher level and higher level. So even within this organization, you could have two to three levels. Now, in some organization, uh, we have PMCs and some we don't. Yeah? Maybe the engineering consultant become a PMC. Now, the role of the PMC, again, I don't want to go into detail. I just want to say two things here. Uh, there are often confusion about what is that organization. In some situations, the PMC is really doing just design supervision. So basically, when these guys submit their drawings or design packages, you'll have technical expert here managing that. So the PMC could be just limited to design supervision. Recently, I was uh, involved with some friend of mine uh, on a project, an airport project in Ethiopia, and uh, my friend was working for the company who was doing design supervision. They are not responsible for the management of the project. They're just responsible for the management of the design and verifying, not management, sorry, verifying that the design comply with the guideline and the standard. <clears throat> so in that case, the PMC is only a design supervision company. In other cases, we've seen quite often uh, in the UAE, in, the, in, the, in Saudi Arabia, and many countries around the region, and even abroad, maybe to a lesser degree, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is the concept the PMC is actually the project or sometimes they call it program management office or project management office is the department is, is a, an external consultant you hire a company uh, that would take over the management of the project 
And in that case, it will have the planner, the scheduler, the estimator, and will include design supervision as well. <clears throat> and in that case, most of the project management would be happening here. <clears throat> now, one more, maybe a few more things to say here today. If you are here, then how much work would you do? As I mentioned, it factor on this. But it's also a factor on the type of contract. Let's say we don't have a PMC, and this company working with uh, an uh, engineering procurement contractor or engineering and construction contractor, and that being done on a fixed price basis. <clears throat> In that case, if I'm the project owner, if the price of the material and labor fluctuation is done, something that concerned me because it's fixed price contract, then my focus would be more on schedule and quality, among other things. <clears throat> if the contract is cost plus reimbursable, then the headache is on me as an owner. In this case, cost is probably become the primary concern. And let me leave it here on a comparison. We could add, if you're interested to know more about any of the things that I touched on, please message us uh, and let us know, and we could record future videos 